The 23rd of October, a national holiday in Hungary. It commemorates the 1956 rise against the Soviet-ruled communist regime. It's a fresh opportunity for Prime Minister Viktor Orban to lash out at those he accuses of planning the destruction of European civilization. The forces of globalization are trying to force our doors open and are working on turning us Hungarians into Homo Brasilius. Today, in the flow of globalization, it's financial empires which have risen up. It's this empire of financial speculation that's captured Brussels and several member states. It's this empire that saddled us with modern-day mass population movement, with millions of migrants and with a new migrant invasion. They've developed a plan to transform Europe into a continent with a mixed population. We alone resist them now. In the crowd, a few voices speak out against Orbán's government. It's getting rough. This uh, small opposition group is asking for more democracy and freedom of speech, and they're just being shoved away by the security forces. We are uh, protesting because of the corruption in our country, because of the development of the police state, because of uh, the demolishing of uh, civil rights. You know, we are losing uh, our freedom step by step. A lot of the youth is leaving our country to get to other countries and to live freely. But I think that we have to fight at home. It's another kind of fight that Bolaj Laszlo is waging. The 22-year-old is the co-founder of the new radical right-wing movement Force and Determination, which hopes to run in next year's parliamentary elections. According to statistics, in 50 or 60 years' time, our continent's population could be replaced from an ethnical point of view. It's estimated that around 30 million and even up to 70 million Middle Eastern Muslims are already living here in Europe. There are about 10 to 12 million people from the Eastern European Gypsy community, not to mention the number of African immigrants. In the next 10 years, up to 1 billion people could leave Africa. Our population is dropping all the time, while the number of people who are coming here or those who are already living here is growing continuously. And if we don't see this, then we can be sure that white people will disappear. I can boldly say that here and now the radical right is back. They must prevent, uh, for example, the neoliberalism and uh, the Muslim immigration into our country. We must prevent these things that are happening in the Western countries. And these things, these things in my opinion, are ruining the Western countries. What do you say when people uh, say that uh, this, this movement, this party is uh, like neo-Nazis? Uh, only, only the leadership can give, give us an interview, not, not the people here. Okay. And, uh, and only, only Bolas is here from the, the leadership. No, he's not happy that he is not happy that we are here. Okay, so the interview was uh, interrupted. We're not very welcome here, so we can't continue interviewing anyone else but the leader. 
Defending Hungarian identity against foreign invasion is also one of the government's main priorities. The target of its latest nationwide campaign, George Soros, the Jewish-Hungarian-born U.S. billionaire. The government is attacking him for what it claims is his plan to bring millions of refugees into Europe. Soros is also the main target of a new law that stipulates that NGOs which receive more than 24,000 euros a year in foreign funds must identify themselves and register as organizations supported from abroad. The law is the object of an infringement procedure by the European Commission. According to the Hungarian branch of the Open Society Foundation, George Soros's human rights charity, it's a dangerous law. This stigmatization is all about making NGOs look like foreign agents, and it makes it harder for them to get funding, because it's less likely that people will want to support organizations labeled as foreign agents. However, there's a more serious consequence to this campaign. What they're doing is creating enemies. The NGOs, Brussels, George Soros, are the enemy. Who will the next enemy be? Hostility usually ends up in violence. We very much hope that this hate campaign will not end up like that. Our next stop, the offices of the Aurora Foundation. On the pavement along the way, anti-Soros tags left behind by a far-right group. Aurora houses the offices of NGOs that defend human rights and the rights of minorities. Hi. Hello. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hi. Come inside. Here we have the Jews, the gypsies, the homosexuals, the drug addicts. Most of these NGOs are, are in the targets uh, of, uh, of the propaganda machine and, and the government. The state has left alone many parts of the, of the Hungarian population, mainly those are in need, and, and these are the NGOs who are helping those people. And it's, sometimes it's very hard to, uh, to work in, in such a situation because, you know, you can feel the hatefulness, you can feel the anger which is generated by the propaganda. We head south to the border with Serbia. Here, a 175-kilometer-long fence has been erected after thousands of illegal immigrants crossed the border into Hungary in 2015. People here in the small village of Ashot Halom are resentful of George Soros' pro-immigration stunts. First, the old guy should be shot. It's hard to win over someone who thinks that way. The only way to beat people like that is to put them six feet under. We don't want to be infested. We don't want other nations to come and disturb our Christian values. We don't want refugees. One thing's for sure, the refugees should be tied to a fence and shot. Then others wouldn't dare come. This video has been viewed close to two million times on YouTube. It was produced by the mayor of Ashotalam, Laszlo Torotskoy. A ön illegális bevándorló és Németországba akar eljutni, akkor Szerbiából a legrövidebb út Horvátországon és Szlovénián keresztül vezet. Ne higgyen a hazug embercsempészeknek. Magyarország rossz választás, Ásotthalon pedig a legrosszabb. Toradskoye is vice president of Jobbik, Hungary's radical right-wing party that has become the largest rival to the ruling Fidesz. He's set up his own border militia. A handful of civilians whom he says have captured more illegal immigrants than the state police. My farm is uh, the, uh, the closest uh, house to, to the border. Mm -hmm. Many people uh, arrive here from, uh, from Pakistan or from Bangladesh, for example from Morocco uh, or Kosovo, and there are no wars, they are not refugees, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, they attack this border fence um, uh, every week. So who is welcome in your town? We want uh, to preserve our traditions. Mm -hmm. I respect the Islam, but uh, 
it's impossible in my country because uh, the Islam is not compatible with the Hungarian traditions. This is a Hungarian town. This is a Catholic, Roman Catholic town. Uh, we can uh, accept uh, those people who respect this fact. Mm -hmm. Hungarian Catholic European town. Laszlo Torotskaya is also known for wanting to ban traditional Muslim dress and the call to prayer, as well as the propagation of gay marriage and public displays of affection by gay people, in a bid to so-called defend the traditions of the village. Ashot Alam is used as an example by far-right and white supremacist movements in Europe and in the United States, and it has drawn some who adhere to the mayor's ideals. We're shown to the house of a German woman who recently moved to the village. I wondered if you would agree to say a few words to us about why you came here. Ah, oh, yes, I can say, I can say, yeah. but, but then you, you do not sense it when I, I tell it to you. Why? Bei Merkel! Merkel, Satan! Na, aber. Merkel und Zorus. Yeah. Ja? Trojanische Pferd. Komm so rein. Okay. Regina arrived last May. Her home lies a few hundred meters from the anti-immigration fence, and she says she feels safe here. The, the borders are open today in Germany. It's a scandal. It's a scandal. And I thought I must go. And I thought this is okay. There is a border. They will protect the border. And I knew if, if they um, come over the border, okay. They, they would not murder me, they would go to Germany, money, money, money. But one day, and it's, it's a sure, one day, in Germany, the, the money is empty. Illegal immigrants to Hungary face up to three years in jail. Last spring, the Hungarian parliament adopted amendments to its asylum law, which allows for the automatic detention of all migrants in transit camps at its borders. The vote drew an outcry from human rights groups and is the object of an infringement procedure by the European Commission. The camps are off limits for the media. <laughs> Okay. No? No. We travel on to Serbia. Some 6,000 asylum seekers to Hungary are waiting in the country's refugee centers. The Subotica center is the closest to the Hungarian border. There are mainly families here who have to wait around a year and sometimes longer to be signed up on the lists of those eligible for asylum in Hungary. It makes Serbia one big refugee uh, center for those who want to apply asylum in the European Union. It's all those kind of rules are making uh, more difficulties for applying for asylum and, and keeping, keeping people uh, waiting longer to, to bring a decision for them. It, uh, it's an, uh, a big open gate for, for smuggling and smugglers. Back to Hungary. Our journey is coming to an end. Well, this is the end of the fence at the junction between Serbia, Romania and Hungary. And a few miles away, we're going to see another very special village. Our little village, that's the slogan that welcomes visitors to the quiet little town of Kubekaza, sown with flowers and European flags. The few anti-Soros posters seen here appeared overnight, we're told. The villagers live in harmony with their Serbian and Romanian neighbors and are worried that things could change. The village's mayor, Robert Molnar, welcomes us in a community cafe where he often lends a hand. He opposes the fence and is outraged by Viktor Orban's closed border policy, 
which he says only contributes to further isolating and dividing the country and overlooks the true priorities. Authoritarian, autocratic regimes always need a big enemy figure to fight against, to wage war against. But the only purpose is to distract attention from the real problems. Problems with the healthcare system have not been solved. Problems with education have not been solved. 700,000 people have left the country have escaped because they see no future or hope. And what I see is that today in Hungary, everything matters but the people. Minderről van szó, csak az emberekről nincs szó.